So I were, used to work for a giant aerospace corporation and worked on forward-looking infrared radars. So I'm now in the uh, FLIR Systems booth with Travis Merrill, and you've got some interesting consumer products, right? That's right. So uh, what have we got here? We're, uh, this is audio and video, so I'm going to explain sure. this a little bit. We've got a, looks like an iPhone with a, uh, a little device stuck into the lightning port. That's right. This is the second generation FLIR 1, which is our flagship consumer device, personal thermal imager. We launched the first personal thermal, thermal imaging device two years ago at CES, the original FLIR 1. This is the second version of that uh, made for iOS. Uh, it allows you to have the power of thermal imaging technology uh, right in your hand. And um, but somehow people are upside down yeah, when they're in thermal. That's that's true. They shouldn't they shouldn't be upside down. <laughs> that's interesting. Um, that's that's Gosh. not normal. Um, you know oh, there oh now now we're right side again. Uh, but this is really largely used for applications in the home. So do-it-yourself type projects around the home, looking for energy inefficiencies, heat leakage, um, uh, any anomalies that you might have uh, in the wall. Let me, let me give a use case. So sure. my, my brother noticed that his cats were always sleeping in this one place on the tile. And they finally realized, they walked over and realized it was warm to the touch of their feet. They could have then somehow traced where it was coming from. Yeah, that's exactly right. And they could gone have gone across to find the hot water line before they paid the guy to exactly, chew it up with a pitchfork. Exactly. Before you before you t tear a hole into the floor to figure out what's going on, you can get a much better sense with thermal imaging. And that's a great application, actually. Um, another another example is actually outdoor use. So people use this uh, to be able to see at night. So it's become very popular from a camping and hunting perspective, being able to look out and, and see wildlife in, in complete darkness. This is not affected whatsoever uh, by the lighting conditions around it. So if this, if this room right now was completely pitch black, the image you would see here would look no different whatsoever. Now explain a couple things to sure. me. So there, uh, for the audience, there's a bunch of uh, little white cubes that are chairs yeah. here, but their, their tops are turning pink and then blue. They're changing color. Why is yeah. that? Yeah, it's just, you know, the, the average temperature in the scene is, is shifting a little oh, bit. Oh, okay, so as so you're moving around, the average temperature. Okay. Exactly, exactly. So it's just showing the hottest to the coldest is changing if you look right. at all there, cold stuff. There are, different, there are different color palettes, right? So we could go to, um, you know, this is probably one of the most... Uh, one of the most well-known within FLIR called uh, called Iron Bow, but this is okay, a different so color. it's bright color. orange going That's to purple. Right. So you I, have, I think you I get what you mean, though. Of... It's averaging the scene, so if everything were cold, you still want to show the hottest and the coldest correct, within that Correct, correct. And this, this temperature spot that you see here is not an average. This is looking at the spot that we're looking at, right? Oh, okay. So this is looking at someone's body heat right there, so you can see can it. you take the baby's the temperature with it? You could, you could. I mean, That's it's not... you do it. They touch your forehead, right? Yeah, exactly. I mean... I actually have a baby, and we, we've used it before for that purpose. Of course no, you have. <laughs> we haven't wanted to wake her in the middle of the night, but wanted to see what her temperature is, and we've used it for that. Oh, um, that's pretty so, interesting. So yeah. this is just a little module, maybe you know, the width of an, an iPhone, maybe three-quarters of an inch thick, that sticks into the uh, lightning port. So how much is the FLIR 1? The FLIR 1 is 249 One of the key things to mention about the hardware itself is you can see here there are actually two cameras. One is a thermal camera. Uh, and the second is a visible camera. That is something that is very unique to FLIR. We call that MSX technology because if you look at the image here, you can see there are a lot of details, right? You can see the text, you can see uh, you know some of the things on the video screen. So it's superimposing the, the it's optical taking, against it? It's taking the visible detail and imposing that on the thermal image to oh. give you a much better context yeah. of the scene and what you're looking at. Might not be that important out in the woods. Well, I don't know. Maybe you'd see the edges of leaves. You, not you could. You yeah, could. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. So, yeah, it's a very, very clear image. Now, we're, we're not going to go over there because it's about eight miles from here, but uh, pan to the right there, Steve. Uh, I see people holding up little monoculars uh, to their eyes. What have they got in their hands? That is that is the newly announced and newly launched FLIR Scout TK. It is a handheld monocular. It's really custom made for the outdoor enthusiast market. Um, it allows you to you know, see in total darkness, see through obscurance. It also has a longer range than the FLIR 1, um, so you can see past 100 yards, and again, could be total darkness. And you see an advantage to that with the iPhone, you're actually going to end up blinding yourself with that light. 
Whereas with the monocular, you'd just be looking at that, right? Yeah, that's true. And you know, the 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 FLIR one for the mobile device is actually more optimized for field of view and less so for range. So that's more optimized for a narrower field of view, but longer range. You can imagine the applications if you're outside and like hunting, wanting to see if there are deer, you know, in the distance or in in a large backyard, and you hear you hear a, you know a howling at night and want to try to see where the coyote is. I mean, this will allow you to now, do this that. This would also allow you to. Have, identify zombies, right? Absolutely. Okay, that's good to know. What was that product called one more time? That is the FLIR Scout TK. 599 will be available later in Q1. Wow, you answered all my questions. Except one more. Where can they find more about your FLIR products? FLIR.com. Wow, you got FLIR.com? Absolutely. Dude, nice.